That includes several Democratic contests in which young challengers are taking on incumbents who have long-standing ties to politics and to their districts. Tonight, we're holding a primary debate for New York's 9th Congressional District in Brooklyn. It's spread across several neighborhoods. You can see there from Park Slope up in the north, down to, over to Brownsville, down to Sheep's Head Bay. The seat is currently held by Yvette Clark, who was first elected to Congress in 2006. She's being challenged by Adam Bocadeco, a community organizer with experience in banking and in the nonprofit sector. Here are tonight's rules. Each candidate will deliver a 45-second opening statement, the order of which was selected at random via a coin toss earlier today. Candidates will have a maximum of 60 seconds to respond with an opportunity for short rebuttals. In the cross-examination round, each candidate will be asked to direct a single question to his or her opponent. And we'll also have a lightning round where candidates will have to answer yes or no to some short questions that I have for them. Thank you for joining us, both of you. Um, Adam Gadeco won the coin toss, and so he will deliver the first opening statement. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you again, Errol. Uh, so I wanted to tell folks about why I'm choosing to run for Congress in the 9th District. Um, and we just wanted to say that, for me, this is uh, deeply personal. Uh, I'm the son of war refugees uh, who came to this country with very little. My dad started off with $50 and managed to not only uh, bring my mom, but uh, I was also raised here, born and raised here. I'm one of six and grew up in a one-bedroom apartment. It's through their courage, through their love, through their determination that I not only managed to attend public school as a child, but attend Haverford College, Harvard Business School on scholarships. I've tried to repay their sacrifice back through a career in public service, uh, starting off uh, helping folks, uh, single moms in particular, find after-school programs for their children, uh, and also trying to help folks with special needs find meaningful employment. The only issue that I, the issue that I find uh, deeply distressing about uh, Ms. Clark's tenure is that she has been in Congress for nearly 12 years and hasn't passed a single piece of legislation. Uh, and has accomplished next to nothing. And in this community where folks are finding it difficult to not only put food on the table, keep a roof over their head, find a decent school, we need someone who's going to fight in Washington just like they do for their own families. Ms. Clark. Thank you, Errol, and greetings, everyone. I'm Yvette D. Clark, and I'm asking for your support. As your member of Congress, I have been a strong and forceful advocate for comprehensive immigration reform protecting Obamacare, the ACA, standing up for women and children, and most importantly, working tirelessly on behalf of all of my constituents. Right now, we need strong, experienced, fully engaged leadership to defeat the homophobic, the misogynistic, the racist, morally bankrupt and corrupt Trump agenda in Congress. As your representative in Washington, and as a member, former member of the New York City Council, I'm fighting for you. Never stopped fighting for you. And so I'm asking for your continued support so that together we can build a better, brighter future for all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to start with you, Mr. Bonkadeko. Um, you've made much of this claim that your opponent has sponsored no legislation. We actually engaged a little bit of, uh, on uh, social media about this because I've been curious about this. You mentioned it uh, again just a minute ago. You've made a specific number, and the number is zero. But as uh, I did point out on, on social media, there's one nonpartisan legislative tracking service that says that Ms. Clark sponsored H.R. 1693, that got merged with several other bills, which is a common occurrence in Congress, and was signed into law. So I wanted to know if you wanted to amend that claim. Uh, I don't. I think our source is the United States Congress. Their website states that Ms. Clark introduced and has passed zero pieces of legislation. But, Errol, for argument's sake, let's say, let's give it the benefit of the doubt. Uh, in the 12 years that Ms. Clark has been in Congress, she's, this is the only thing that she's been able to stay, that she's been able to do. We've got folks who are finding it difficult to put food on the table, to keep a roof over their head, to put, to ensure that their children aren't going to be deported or taken away or loved ones are going to be taken away. You know what, let's, let, let's, let's get a fact check on it. Um, tell, tell us what's going on with 1693 and any other bills that may have gotten me, sort of retitled. Let me just say that. this. My opponent has been extremely deceiving to the people of this district. For the past 11 years, I have co-sponsored over 121 bills that have become law. In addition to that, I have introduced and passed legislation on the House floor 
for helping people whose names were on the no-fly list. This caused the Fast Redress Act passed the House, was adopted by the Obama administration as policy. And as you rightly stated, I've also uh, passed legislation in our national defense authorization bills. In addition to that, just recently, given the seniority that I have in the House of Representatives, which has actually put me in a position to be even more forceful, I just passed a bill on the House floor, bipartisan, for opioid abuse treatment. So I don't know where my opponent is getting his facts from, because I understand that he's not looking for facts. He's looking to deceive. Uh, Errol, can I have point that out? So Ms. Clark just mentioned that she co-sponsored legislation that passed. Anyone can attach their name to anything. What has she written and True. passed into law? She has not done that. True. In the 12 years, she has not introduced and sponsored a piece of legislation that has passed two chambers and can reach the president's Correct. desk. And this information is coming from Congress's own website. So I'm not sure where Ms. Clark is finding the error or the misclarification because it's their website. That would, again, Congress.gov. Well, let, let, let me clarify something because I don't want my viewers to be confused. Yeah, exactly. You're making, you're making a, a dramatic distinction between sponsoring and co-sponsoring so that if there was a bill that was introduced, say, by Hakeem Jeffries in the adjacent district, and she signs on to it, you're saying that's not, that's not legislative? I, our, again, what we're, what we're pointing out is that she has not introduced and passed a law. She has not written it, found the co-sponsors, and passed two chambers. This is not, there's no, there's nothing really controversial about what we're I saying. Mean, well, does it even matter, though? Like in the case it does matter. That I what, so what's important about this is the fact that if we're talking about doing the heavy work in Washington in terms of building the coalitions that are going to improve the kind, the lives of folks who live here on the margins, we're going to need someone who's going to do the heavy lifting. We're going to need someone who is going to be interested in pushing things through committee. Simply attaching your name to other person's work and then saying that I was a person who was able to pass it is not the same as doing the work of writing legislation and making sure that you're finding the co-sponsors to pass that bill. Okay, I don't, I don't, Congress's I, website. I, I, I do not want. We to, don't want filibuster. I do not. Well, I don't. Want, <laughs> we don't want to belabor this. Um, yeah. How many bills did you introduce um, in whatever period? Oh time my you goodness. Think I mean, there have been the last four. there have been numerous pieces of legislation. Let me say this clearly: my opponent does not know the legislative process. This is unfortunate. Someone seeking to run for Congress and has no idea of the legislative process, what it actually takes to pass legislation in Congress. I have been a forceful advocate for our constituents. My record is impeccable. And unfortunately, we have someone seated here wanting to be a member of Congress that has no idea about this process whatsoever, the legislative process. And, 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 and let me add this. I came in Congress when George Bush was president of the United States. Yes, we had the House of Representatives, and I was proud to pass the refresh, uh, fast redress act. Since then, uh, Obama was elected. We had one session. And the next session, the Tea Party came in. The, the House of Representatives have been dominated by right-wing Republicans for the past eight years. So it's, a, it, it, it's really quite remarkable that I've been able to pass the legislation that I have, given the pushback that we're getting from a Trump-led Republican Congress. Yeah, I think, Errol, I think you just hit it on the head. So you asked her how many pieces of legislation she introduced. The question is, how many of those pieces of the legislation have passed two houses of, of, of Congress and reached the president's desk? And that number is zero. And that is, the, in fact, where we got that information. That's right. all right. We can put up the fact check because, because you know what? I think that our our uh, I, I are far about. more interested in the lack of experience with this. I, well, I think the and his thing. inability to demonstrate anywhere in his literature and his rhetoric that he has done anything for these people. He's a community activist without a movement. Yeah. He has a community organization and based on uh, anyone who has looked at his record, you can see this is a young man who's gone from job to job to job to job looking to enhance his well-being and not the people of this district. Yeah, you're from, yeah, you're from New York. Yeah, you're from New York. I was born and raised in this district. My opponent is a giant Get the completely mad. on the scene. No, no, no. <laughs> a quick response and then we can take a break. I understand that Ms. Clark is upset by the fact that she has a competitive primary. I'm That's that. Can I please finish? Sure, please. Thank you. Um, so I think, look, so to the point that you just mentioned, 
all the issues that we are talking about, whether it's folks living in NYCHA, folks worried about whether or not they're going to have a roof over their head, whether or not immigrants are concerned about loved ones being taken away. Ms. Clark has done nothing, <laughs> next to nothing, on all of these fronts. And when we talk about experience, look, you're right. Johnny, come lately. You are not in our community. I've been on the community board for six years, and I've never and you seen you. Can I? 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 Can I?